Quantum mechanics, there are some properties which we cannot have certain knowledge about simultaneously. For example, position and momentum, or as we saw in my last video, spin in perpendicular directions. So as I said, the rest of this series is going to be talking about whether this is an epistemic problem or an ontological problem. That is to say, is it just that we can't have knowledge of these properties, but they're really there in reality, the particles have the properties, but we just can't know them simultaneously? Or is it actually that the, the particles themselves don't have one property when they do have the other, and they are mutually exclusive in reality? Is it a question of our knowledge, or is it a question of what's actually going on in reality? In this video I'm going to be talking about the EPR paper, which basically puts forward the view that this is an epistemic problem, or more so that it's just a problem of quantum mechanics, that quantum mechanics is incomplete, um, and that in reality these properties really exist simultaneously. It's a paper written by Einstein, Podolsky and Rosen. They wrote it in 1935, and it's entitled Can Quantum Mechanical Description of Reality Be Considered Complete? Okay, so what is a complete theory? Well, they say one necessary condition for a complete theory is this. Every element of the physical reality must have a counterpart in the physical theory. Um, and another important question to answer is, what's physical reality? Well, they say, well, one sufficient condition for something being considered part of physical reality is this, which they call the criterion of physical reality. If without in any way disturbing a system, we can predict with certainty, that is, with probability equal to unity, the value of a physical quantity, then there exists an element of physical reality corresponding to this physical quantity. Okay, so th again we have the uh, condition for completeness, which is a necessary condition, so if this condition isn't fulfilled, then the a theory can't be considered complete and we've got the criterion of physical reality, which is a sufficient condition. So, if something fulfills the criterion, then it automatically qualifies as an element of physical reality. On the issue of these properties, which the precise knowledge of one precludes precise knowledge of the other, um, here's what they have to say. And uh, just as a note, in the mathematics of quantum mechanics, properties are represented by operators. In the case of spin, it's a 2x2 two two matrix. If the operators which represent these properties don't commute, then that's where the precise knowledge becomes mutually exclusive. So when they're talking about properties represented by non-commuting operators, that's the properties we're talking about. So in their paper, they note the fact that for these properties represented by non-commuting operators, precise knowledge of one precludes us having precise knowledge of the other. And as we saw in the last video, trying to determine empirically the value of one of these properties will destroy any previous measurements of the other property. Um, so they say from this fact follows two options. Either one the quantum mechanical description of reality given by the wave function is not complete, or two, when the operators corresponding to two physical quantities do not commute, the two quantities cannot have simultaneous reality. So it's either quantum mechanics is incomplete, it's not telling the full story of what's going on in, in reality, or in reality these things actually don't exist at the same time. Those are the only two options. So now they propose a thought experiment, and the thought experiment they propose is actually in terms of position and momentum, but we're going to keep going with uh, talking about spin, so we're going to translate it into an equivalent experiment. It's all pretty much the same. So, two particles are prepared in an entangled state such that they have um, a net spin of zero, and then they're allowed to separate. And by conservation of spin, the two particles now, in any given direction, must have opposite values of spin. So say, for example, we measure the first particle, particle A, for spin in a particular direction, let's say the x direction, and we get a positive result. Then we know that for the other particle, particle B, if we do a measurement for spin in the x direction, we're going to get a negative result. So by measuring particle A for spin in the x direction, we know for certain without having to measure particle B what its value of spin will be for the x direction because by conservation of spin it has to add up to zero. So now if we recall the criterion for physical reality this perfectly uh, fits this 
criterion, which was a sufficient condition. That is, without disturbing the system in any way, we have certain knowledge of the va of the property of that system. Therefore, that physical quantity spin in the x direction corresponds to you know a real physical property in the world. But alternatively, we could have measured particle A for spin, let's say, in the y direction. And as before, the result of this experiment would give us certain knowledge of the value for spin for B in the y direction. So that too, by the criterion of physical reality, would be considered an element of physical reality. So now, our measurement of particle A hasn't disturbed particle B in any way, shape or form. The two particles have separated, we've just measured one of the particles, we haven't touched the other. So they argue that it's ridiculous to say that the reality of particle B, you know, whether it has spin in the x or y direction, to say that that depends on a measurement that we do on particle A, which is space-like separated, which isn't touching it, which we're not disturbing particle B in any way, is totally ridiculous to say. The properties of particle B aren't just popping in and out of existence as we do experiments on particle A without even touching particle B. That's just not possible. So they conclude that these two properties must already be elements of reality. Okay, this is the assumption of locality. That what exists in particle A is local to that, to that particle. In, in a letter in 1948 to Max Born, here's how Einstein himself put it. That which really exists in B should therefore not depend on what kind of measurement is carried out in part of space A. It should be independent of whether or not any measurement at all is carried out in space A. So this is, this is the assumption of locality. And by holding to the assumption of locality, we are led to the only conclusion in this thought experiment that these properties in particle B spin in the x and y direction. Both have physical reality. Our measurements on A aren't bringing them into reality. They are elements of physical reality and they are existing simultaneously. Therefore, We've negated our second option in the either-or statement. Either quantum mechanics is incomplete or properties represented by non-commuting operators can't have simultaneous reality. Well, here's an example where they do have simultaneous reality. Therefore, quantum mechanics is incomplete. Okay, so that's the argument for hidden variables as best as it can be argued as argued by Albert Einstein himself. Uh, the whole argument is, is riddled with assumptions based in classical mechanics. It's basically saying quantum mechanics is false because we assume classical mechanics. But uh, in future videos, we'll get onto that and see why this argument is completely wrong.